I want to discuss what most people think are two different weapons, the FOIL and the EPE. We call the FOIL also the EPE de Sal and the EPE the EPE de Combat. That means the sword you use in the training hall versus the sword you use in a fight. Some people think those are two different weapons. I submit that they are not. They are the same weapon used for two different purposes. The purpose of the foil is to inculcate into the student the habit of fighting intelligently and prioritizing defense. The rule of foil is don't get hit, not ever. And the rule of epe is don't get hit, not ever. FOIL has various conventions to it, rules, and people know them as the rules of priority, and they get all confused about it. But in fact, it's very simple. We reward people who fight intelligently, and we penalize people who don't fight intelligently. You are rewarded when you prioritize defense, and you are penalized when you do not prioritize defense. It's that simple. The idea is, by training with the FOIL, you will develop habits, habits, they're important for your survival. Now, the, um, the dueling sword is a bit different. In that practice, there are no rules. If you hit, you hit. If you're not, you're not. And it's as simple as that. There are no rules to protect you if you fail to fight, in, un, uh, fail to fight intelligently. Right? So in Epe, you are free to be just as stupid as you like and pay the price. It's noteworthy that in the foil, when two people conceive of and execute an offensive action at the same time, both hits are discarded. Neither one is counted. With the epe, if two people conceive and execute an offensive action at the same time and two hits arrive, both hits are counted against each fencer. Epe alone had the uh, wonderful uh, possibility of a double defeat, that is, both fencers losing the bout. The best epee, real epee, is not five touches, six touches, ten touches, twenty-five touches. That's crazy. Real epee is one touch. Now, there's a reason for that. In the practice of the foil, we limit the target to the torso. Why? Why do we do that? Well, foil is intended to simulate uh, a duel. L'amour. Right? L'amour. Not l'amour, that's different. L'amour <laughs> to death. So you're practicing driving six inches of steel through your opponent's heart and anything else to the legs or the arms or the toes or the fingertips. I don't care. This fight's going on until you're dead, or I am. That's the foil. The epe, the entire body is target. I can hit you on the tip of the toe, tip of your finger, a hair follicle. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Why is that? Well, that's because the epe represents a combat, a premier song to first blood. In other words, I don't necessarily want to kill you. We've just got a personal beef. It may not be worth killing over or dying over. But so if I can get out of this with just a scratch or giving you just a scratch, that's the way we're getting out of this. Both of us alive. And to make errors again in the future. Right? It's very important that you understand these two distinctions. In Epe, there is uh, there's a thing we used to hate at the Academy. Uh, Jean-Jacques hated it, Maitre Gillet uh, hated it, and, uh, and I also hate it. Um, it's the gamesmanship of Epe that goes like this. If I can score a touch against you, now it's one to nothing in my favor. These are, these are bouts for five touches, yeah? So now, all I have to do is double hit with you four times. I, I'll let you hit me, but... I hit you at the same time that I win five to four. Right? Nothing wrong with that. Jacques would say, 
your plan, your strategy is to let someone stab you four times, that's your strategy. See the problem with that? If you don't, you should probably play tennis. Anyway, um, so there's this, there's this thing about double hitting as a strategy, as a gamesmanship in the game of fencing, that no real, no real fencer would do that. No real teacher would teach you to do that. The idea is you don't get hit, not ever. And if I'm training you, I'm teaching you to not get hit, not ever. If I were to find that you allowed yourself to be hit to win a prize, we're done. Anyway, that's the background. What I really want to talk about is two different fencers, two different epeists. Um, this, this may be the two best fencing bouts I, I ever saw because I learned the most from watching them. Both of the fencers involved here, uh, let's call them uh, Kenny and Robert. I'm not going to use anybody's real name. We'll call them Kenny and Robert. Both of these guys are highly skillful, highly skillful. I used to have to give them lessons. And frankly, they were giving me the lessons and I was just trying to keep up and, <laughs> you know, they were so far ahead of me. Their fencing was so far ahead of my teaching. Uh, and that's why Jean Jacques had me give them lessons because I was going to learn how to give a good lesson by working with them. Anyway, they were both very highly skilled they were both very highly intelligent. Talk about your straight A students, man, your Dean's List guys. These guys are, they got some smarts going on, right? They're both very highly motivated. Right? So let me tell you about these two Epe bouts. Once upon a time, there was a thing called the Empire State Games. And uh, when it was starting up, the first year they had it, I got corralled along with Bucky Leach to be coaches, fencing coaches for this certain district, which uh, I couldn't say no because the old man said, oh, this is what you're gonna do. So this is what I did. In the course of that ridiculous situation, um, I had a student, uh, let's call him, let's call him Bob, because you're, uh, he was very much like Bob Newhart, the, the comic. In, in, in manner and speech. So if you want to know the guy I'm talking about, check out Bob Newhart and watch some of his shtick and, uh, and you'll get where I'm at. Anyway, uh, Bob had never fenced Epe in his life, but because nobody showed up to the qualifier, by default, he qualified to fence in the Epe event. <laughs> and he had no idea what to do. So my job was to Train Bob for the Empire State Games in four weeks. We had a month. So I, I taught Bob the, the old dueling advice. No matter what you do, no matter what happens, when in doubt, stick your arm out and step back. <laughs> you know, get the point out there and step back. That's all he knew how to do. That's all I taught him. I said, don't parry. Don't attack, don't do any of that shit, don't beat the blade, don't do anything. No matter what happens, put that point in line and step back. Okay. Now, Kenny was, as I said, a really, really excellent at bass. Man, he could do things, he could make that sword dance if he wanted to. And it, there was an event uh, where he was going to fence and uh, we're thinking maybe uh, he might just win this whole thing because, uh, you know, he's a pretty serious guy. And in the first round, it came to pass that Kenny and Bob were in the same pool. And they had the fence with each other. So uh, the bout started and something happened and Bob stepped back and stuck his arm out. Kenny ran onto the point. Touch against Kenny. 
What the hell just happened? Well, to make matters worse, it happened again. And then it happened again. And I could see that Kenny was getting really frustrated and upset. To make a long story slightly shorter, um, Kenny lost that bout to Bob. It was something like five to one or five to two. And, uh, and, and I think it was because uh, Kenny lost his focus. He was thinking ahead to the better fences he was gonna have to meet in the later rounds. And he wasn't here and now with the opponent that was in front of him. And then once he started to get frustrated and emotionally aroused, that rendered him unable to access his skill. That's no question who was a better fencer. My God, are you kidding me? <laughs> you know, no question about that. But Kenny ran onto Bob's point because all Bob knew how to do was stick your arm out and step back. And that's all he did. Interestingly, the aftermath was that um, people weren't taken in by this. I mean, that was the only bout that Bob won. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, the rest of the guys just trampled him. Interestingly, Kenny also lost all his next bouts and was eliminated from the tournament. He could not emotionally recover from his defeat by Bob to refocus and access his skills. He should have won that tournament. He certainly should have beat Bob. So in the aftermath, Kenny was pretty upset and uh, we didn't see him in the cell for a while. On the other hand, Bob had new business cards made and he would introduce himself. Hi, I'm Bob, I beat Kenny. How do you do? I'm Bob, I beat Kenny. When that bout was over, he looked at me and Anyway, so that's bout number one. Um, I learned a lot from that. And, I, and I, I believe Kenny did too. I mean, you know, he came back and he regained his brilliance and he did well and all that stuff. I, I think he learned a lot from that. And uh, I don't know if Bob learned anything, but he sure had a good time. And that counts for something. The other bout I want to tell you about is... Uh, Let's call this guy Robert. Robert was just such a good fencer, such an excellent epaist. He was always in the cell. If it wasn't taking a lesson, he was practicing with somebody or he was working on the dummy or something, practicing his point control, he could get that point onto your wrist from any place in the known universe. Maybe the best epaist I've ever seen. And I'll tell you why I think so. I mentioned this idea of the strategy of get one touch ahead and then double touch him for four times and you win five to four. There was an event in which um, Bob was not doing well, uh, excuse me, Robert was not doing well. And uh, he couldn't quite access his skill. I mean, he, he just, Something was on his mind or distracting him or was aroused emotionally by something else. He just wasn't there. And his mediocre opponent was picking him apart, like four to one or four to nothing so far, right? Now in Epe, if you get two touches ahead, you're probably gonna win because of the double touch factor, right? So Robert is down four to zip or four to one, and I, I observed him go to the end of the strip. And I, I thought maybe he looked depressed or something. But I, I saw he, he took a big, deep breath and blew it out. And then took his place on the strip. And then he won five to four in Epe, coming back from four to nothing or maybe four to one. To win five to four. That means he executed five perfect actions. One after another. Boom, 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 boom. Because the elapsed time, the elapsed fencing time from 
time he started back to the time he won that bout was about, oh, done. He just nailed that guy five times. Bam, 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 bam. Robert was able to manage his emotions, whatever was in his way. He was able to put that aside and access his skill. Skill doesn't mean a thing if you can't get at it when you need it. And what prevents you from getting at it is usually emotion, fear, anger. And that's why we say that the key to combat of all kinds is fear management. Fear management.